name is Jeff Giroux, and today I'm going to be covering an alternate option for HA via LB, which is to have DSR enabled uh, within the ALB tier. One of the requirements, of course, is that the ALB has DSR enabled. By default, it is disabled, but when it is enabled, what are the benefits of this? Um, this reduces configuration complexity within the ALB as well as the F5 side. And why does that happen? Well, this allows you to take this current public IP, in this example, 1.1.1.1, and configure it the same as your listener on the F5. So if we drop a VIP here, let's go over here and show how that listener would actually be configured. It's quite simple. We have 1.1.1.1 slash 32. Now for app A, app B, if you've seen previous videos, you know that you can separate these out by ports. So we can do the same thing here. Maybe your next app is 8443, and so on. In this configuration, SNAT is still required. Otherwise, asymmetrical routing is going to occur. We also have to remember the, the concept of the back end for the ALB. In previous videos, we had talked about how the ALB talked to secondary IPs on the F5. In the DSR enable scenario, that's not a requirement. We can actually talk to the primary IPs. So the ALB back end will be talking to big IP unit A on 10.1.1.10 and big IP unit B on 10.1.1.11. DNAT will be disabled, so as client traffic flows through the Azure cloud, it's going to hit 1111, be directed to the ALB, which then gets directed to a, uh, the F5 unit, listening on a VIP of 111 as well. So in this case, I kept showing the same public IP. What if the ALB had yet another unique public IP? 2.2.2.2. The same example would apply. We'd have a VIP number 2, and now our VIP listener could look like this. This allows us to have multiple public IP configurations and multiple backend IP configurations as well. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for the next series.